Hey guys, it's Sam, and today we're going to look at our final installment in the series, Astigmatism Made Easy. We started out by kind of defining astigmatism, and then defining it as corneal versus lenticular, regular versus irregular, and in the last video we looked at it as with the rule, against the rule, or oblique. So today we're going to go down into the minutia of it, and we're going to define it as simple myopic, compound myopic, simple hyperopic. Uh, compound hyperopic or mixed astigmatism. So first let's just look at simple myopia. So you'll sometimes see the abbreviation SMA, that's simple myopic astigmatism, and what it is uh, for illustration is one of the major meridians is going to fall in front of the retina. And, you know this is our cornea, that's our retina obviously, um, and then one of them is going to land on the retina on the macula, um, on that fovea centralis where the, the cone photoreceptor cells are. So we have one light ray is falling in front of it. Myopia, you think of the eye as effectively too long, right? And then one falls on it. So I wanna look at examples of this type of prescription so you can classify it with confidence. So simple myopia, so we'll have, um, So we see one meridian is a minus power, right? It's a myope. Then the way we determine the type of classification is we transpose all these prescriptions we're gonna look at. The only step you do is transpose them and then you compare the sphere values. So this is a simple myopia. So negative one in one meridian, major meridian. If you add the cylinder to that, you get plano. A plus one and a minus one equals zero or plano. You drop the cylinder value down, change the sign, rotate the axis. But all you're doing is you're, you're comparing the sphere powers. When you compare a minus one and a plano, these are our two major meridians, you would say that it's simple myopic astigmatism. One major axis is plano, one is a minus value. You know, and let's go ahead and let's further classify this because we well, now we have that knowledge base as well. So you need a minus one at the 180, and you need a plano at 90. Well, if you remember from the last video, if you need more minus power to correct it along the 180, that must mean that our cornea is steepest along the horizontal meridian, that 180. So if it's steepest along the 180, that means that it must be against the rule of astigmatism. And to illustrate that, that's like our football that's um, standing up. So it would be flatter along this meridian and it's steeper along the 180 meridian, this horizontal meridian. So again, simple myopia. Uh, you need more minus power to correct it along the horizontal and that's counteracting how steep it is along, along that horizontal meridian. Let's look at our next type of astigmatism classification. Let's say compound myopia or compound myopic astigmatism. So here's a simple example of that. Negative a quarter, negative a quarter, axis 90. So the step, all we're gonna do is transpose it. To transpose, add your cylinder to your sphere. So negative a half plus a quarter, we drop the cylinder down, change the sign, rotate the axis 90 degrees, and all we're doing is comparing our um, sphere signs. We have a, a minus sign and a minus sign that's compound myopia, right? It makes sense. It's easy to visualize. Um, with this, we need negative a half along the 180. We have negative a quarter along the 90. That tells me that the cornea is steeper along the 180, that horizontal 180. So when it's steeper along the 180, it's against the rule of stigmatism. See how we defined it as compound myopia, and then we just defined it as against the rule of stigmatism. And again, it's a regular astigmatism, not irregular. It is a regular type of astigmatism because the principal meridians are 90 degrees apart. Now, going in order here, we'll do 
simple hyper simple hyperopic astigmatism. So with that, we'll do a plus two, a negative two, axis 180. Okay, so if, if the question is like, here's your prescription, what type of astigmatism is, all you wanna do is transpose it to get your answer. Add the cylinder to the sphere. We're gonna get a plano, drop it down, change the sign, rotate your axis 90 degrees. So we get plano plus two, axis 90. Let's compare a plano for one sphere, a plus two for the other, simple, hyperopia, simple hyperopic astigmatism. So let's see, so our cornea is steeper in the 90 degree meridian, and let's, let's visualize that. So this is our cornea, we know the 90 is vertical, and it shows that we need a plano power to correct that in the 90, and we need a plus two along the 180. So a plus two is a steeper power. So we actually, which means that the cornea would be flatter in the horizontal meridian. So we need less power because the cornea is steeper along the 90. It's easier to, to see if this was like a negative three, then that makes more sense. The ne negative three neutralizes the steep cornea. But in this example, a plano power, um, which is, is actually going to help neutralize the cornea, which would be steeper in that 90. So we would say that this is with the rule of stigmatism and it is simple hyperopia because you have simple for plano, hyperopia with the plus two. All right, so now we're gonna do compound hyperopia. Again, you know, very simple if you think through the steps. I'll just write a prescription up here. So we got plus 75, plus 75, axis 180. Let's just go ahead and combine our cylinder and our sphere. We're transposing it. So we get plus 150, minus 75, axis 90. Again, to define this, all we have to do is look at our, our two sphere powers once we transpose it. They're both, both hyperopic prescriptions. Right, so in our in our steepest and our flattest meridian, it's both plus power. So we're going to compound hyperopic astigmatism. Um, and lastly, I want to look at mixed astigmatism. Mixed astigmatism, as you would guess, is going to be when one sphere power after transposition is plus and one is minus value. So mixed astigmatism, negative one plus two axis 90. So when we transpose this, when we add a plus two and a minus one, this, this tricks some people up. Just think of it, you know, if you have minus one, then you're adding plus two numerically to that, you are left with a plus one. And just drop this down, minus two, axis 180. Again, all we're going to do is compare these two sphere signs. You have a minus one and a plus one. So it's a mixed astigmatism. So you have minus one value and a plus one in the other. So we see the power is minus one at 90. Let's, for this one, let's classify it as well. Um, so we need more minus power in the 90 degree meridian because it's neutralizing all the plus power of the cornea, right? That concept, you want that concept to sink in. So if you're doing minus one in the 90, a minus one is, is obviously more minus than a plus one along the 180. So we would say that this prescription is actually with the rule of stigmatism because that minus one is counteracting the steep cornea we're encountering along that vertical meridian. I hope these videos have been helpful um, in classifying astigmatism as corneal, lenticular, you know, residual, uh, with the rule, against the rule, oblique, simple myopia, compound hyperopia, uh, you know, all the different types of astigmatism. So you want to memorize um, 
just really the definitions of these astigmatisms and how to work with them. But then also you want to be able to work with them in the contact lens problems that you'll encounter on your NCL examination. Uh, so you want to be able to define, is this with the rule? You know, what type of lens will work with this because it's with the rule? Um, so if you need help with that, visit some of the other videos because we go into that in, in a fair amount of depth. Um, and if, if you don't get it the first time through, just, you know, watch the video again. You know, um, that's what these are designed for. So you could watch these miniature lectures at your convenience and to supplement your studies. So I do appreciate you watching. Share the videos. Um, you know, uh, definitely subscribe to the channel if it's been helpful. Uh, I love your comments. It, it kind of, it gave me the idea for this series of videos. Just someone saying that they really would like some more examples and to almost to just kind of, uh, take a breath and you know slow down and go through these um, a little bit slower so they can you know comprehend the material a little bit easier. But if you do have any comments or questions, I love to see those, and we'll see you next time.